haven't done one of these in a while, but I've been thinking about doing this one for a while and uh, talking about cars for a little bit. So the first car I remember my family having was, I believe it was a 1978 Dodge Aspen RT. And uh, I wish I had a picture or something, but you can look it up. But the, uh, the Aspens were made 76, 77, and 78. Like I said, I want to believe that ours was a 78 year model. And uh, it was black. And I had these stripes going down the sides. And I, I believe it was on the bottom was red and then orange and then yellow going across the top. And then it went around the back of the car on the spoiler. And I had this big RT on the back. And then uh, it had black interior and it had little black louvers on the, the little quarter window. And I believe it also had window louvers on the back of the window, the back window. And so I always thought that that car was so cool. And you know, even being young, I, I wanted that car for when I grew up, and I wanted that to be my car. And, like I said, I remember that being our family car for the longest period of time. And, uh, you know, my dad always said that it was a special car because there weren't too many of them made and all this stuff like that. And when you're a kid, you, you believe those things. But... My dad was never known to tell the right stuff. At one point, he told me that our last name used to be Reinhardt and that it was changed to Field around one of the World Wars because they were worried about being German ancestry or something like that. But anyway, so as I grew up, I was taking that as a grain of salt. And me and my brother Jeff were talking about he had found one down on Little Rock or someone had called him about one and that's kind of sparked my interest in trying to find one or it's not like I have the money to get one but you know there's a couple cars that if I could get that I would want and that's one of them uh, the last I knew of the car so when my parents divorced uh, we took I think it was a Plymouth Valiant. I don't really remember the year of it. But I remember we took it. It was a gold-colored car, and the speedometer didn't work. And to kind of figure out how fast we were going, my dad would have us time in the mile markers, see how long it would take, and then you could kind of estimate how fast you were going from that. So we took that Plymouth Valiant. Uh, but before that time period... Uh, I want to say my dad was working in a little town called Newport, Arkansas, working for, I think it was Jim Everly, truck driver. He was a truck driver. And so we were living in Truman, where my mom lives and everything right now. And uh, so, you know, this is way back before digital currency and all that stuff. And you actually had to go pick up a physical paper check and then you would go to the bank and cash it. And so, I believe that's what had happened. My mom had drove to, to Newport in the car. And somewhere on the way back, uh, someone pulled out in front of her from a little countryside road. And she hit him. And the only thing I really remember about it is it messed up the whole front of the car. My sister Amanda was, I believe she was sleeping in the back seat. And she got thrown into the seat. Luckily, no one was hurt. But it pretty much jacked the whole car up. And uh, I remember it was fixed. I, it was never repainted, though, but it had new fenders on both sides, a new grill, and a new hood put on it. And uh, the car was left in Arkansas when uh, we moved back to Illinois. And... I think my mom had it for a little bit, and then I, I don't know what happened to the car after that. I mean, I haven't seen it, and but going back to why these are so hard to find is that if you look at all the numbers, because I've been curious about this here lately, and I've been looking and seeing about them and stuff, and I found one, I think it was close to Charlotte not too long ago, that was about $8,000 that 
if I was single, I probably would have went and picked it up just for nothing more than, yeah, it's a cool car. It's, it's, I found out that they're pretty rare cars, but it's more the nostalgic aspect of, you know, like the first family car. And you just, you don't see them. And uh, so I, I was starting to look at, uh, I found this website and they had production numbers of the cars. Like I said, they were only made. Uh, 1976, 77, 78, and I believe there were like 17,000 of them made in 76. There were like 4,500-ish or so made in 77, and there were only 1,500 RTs made in 78. And then they did a couple other packages, like a Super Coupe, and there was another one, like a RT500 or something. I can't really remember right now. But if you look at it with the RTs and those couple special packages, there were probably about 25,000 of these cars made over about a three year period. And it's one of those cars that, you know, it's well past the muscle car era. And it's, you know, those late 70s cars that were restricted. And it's an Aspen. And so it's not that, they weren't that popular of a car. And even today, they're not as popular as, let's just say, like a Mustang or a Camaro or something like that. But I would like to have one just because that was the first car I remember us having. And it was the only car that we had for a good period of time. Probably, probably a good first two, three, four years of my life. But part of it is is we didn't necessarily need a second car because it was just you know my dad my mom my brother Jeff and me and that was enough for us and then my dad drove trucks so it's not like for the most part he did that my entire life so it's not like he had a job where he needed to drive back and forth so if it was one of those things he would either drive close and we would go pick him up or he would park his truck somewhere near the house or at the house depending on what was going on and that was just kind of the way it was but it's one of those like right now if I could have any two cars in the whole world and I know it's gonna sound kind of crazy but I would, I would love to have one of those and the other car is a story for another time but I talk about this because, you know, Finley just turned three, and we have the two Mustangs. We have the 2008 Mustang that's black with purple stripes on it. Um, they're, they're retro boss stripes, and, you know, that was Denise's first car when we first came to the States, or that was the first new car I'd ever bought was that Mustang, and it was Denise's car for, for a while, and then we have an 84 t-top car and I've been working on the 84 for about two years now and I got it running and it's just it's one of those cars that just seems like it wanted to set out in a field and die so it's fighting me and right now as I speak today um, I had to get all new fuel tank and everything that associates with that and I got that about three weeks ago for the car. But come to find out, the uh, sending unit, which tells you how much gas you have in the car, was the wrong one. I, it, it's Looking into that car, it's, it's going to be a really weird car just because um, for some of the stuff with it being a T-top, I read that they had changed some of the way that they did the cars in October of 83. Well, this car was built in October of 83. So it seems like it still has some of the stuff from the older year models. And so when I ordered the sending unit, it said that this sending unit was for an 84 or 85 5.0 liter manual transmission car that has a carburetor. And that's all the stuff that this car has. And I probably should have went ahead and dropped the gas tank and just double checked everything before I ordered it. But the website that I ordered from specializes in Mustang stuff, but you know. 
So I got it all down, realized it wasn't the right one. And uh, yeah, so I, the right one should be coming in today. It should be at the house right now. And uh, well, the only reason I say this is because, you know, Finley has been saying he wants to ride in the Mustang. And I'm like, okay, we'll go ride in the Mustang. And he's like, no, the broke Mustang. And he just loves this car. And I got to do that. And the head's got to come off of it. Because I think the heads are bad. So I have another set of heads, which that's going to be so much fun to fix. But hopefully by the end of this weekend, which would be right before the new year of 2023, I will have the car running and I can take Finley for another ride in it because we haven't been able to ride in it for a long time because it's been broke. And he hasn't been happy so much so that I've just been kind of pushing it off because I didn't want to spend the money to get the whole new fuel tank and all that other stuff on top of all this other work that I've done to the car. And he's just wanting to ride in it. And I keep telling him it's broke. And he's like, I fix. And you know, it's kind of cute that he's not even three years, just about to turn three years old. And he wants to go outside and fix the car, which, you know, I know that he has no clue what's going on, but he just wants the car because he likes the way it sounds and all the stuff like that. But like I said, hopefully, before the new year of 2023 I'll be able to have the car fixed and me and Finley can go for a ride I've been wanting to work on it a little bit over the last couple weeks but it's just been too cold to do I've been afraid to to drop the antifreeze out of it because it's been getting down past freezing the last week or so here in Georgia so I'm hoping the next couple days are gonna be nice I think it says it's like uh, I think my car says it's like 79 degrees right now. 70. So hopefully tonight I can work on it. And sometime Saturday or Sunday the car will be ready to drive. And uh, yeah, I can take Finley for a ride and make him a happy man. So that's about it for this one. Love you, Finn.